going to get started here in just a second. Just hang in there. Um, just give ourselves a couple more minutes for all of our attendees to uh, log in. We'll get started in just about a minute. Okay, if all of our panelists today will make sure that they turn their phones off of mute, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you today for all of our attendees. Um, my name is Elena Scott, and I'm the online manager for Tire Business. Welcome to today's webinar, Can You Survive Online Tire Sales? Today's event will be moderated by Sig Mikolarczyk, our manage managing editor. Before I hand it over to Sig, just a few housekeeping issues to review. First. Today's webinar will be available along with all the slides, and they'll be emailed to all registrants, as well as made available on demand. Also, if you have any questions, we'll be leaving about 30 minutes at the end of the webinar today to answer them. To submit a question, you can use the console located at the right side of your screen. Expand the question box and write your question in the box that says, Enter a question for staff. We'll do our best to get to all of the questions that you ask. Today. You can also submit questions on Twitter using hashtag online tire buying or by emailing them to me at ascott at crane.com. That's C-R-A-I-N dot com. Now I'd like to introduce Managing Editor Sig Michalarczyk. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Let's try to set the stage here for our webinar today, which in effect really deals with your livelihood. So, you've been purchasing tires from tire makers X, Y, and Z for years now, been loyal. You've given them what you say are the best years of your business life, more than likely. And now they want to start selling your bread and butter products directly to consumers through those tire makers' own websites. What do you do? You think it's the beginning of the end and look for an exit strategy? You decide maybe it's time to go fishing full time? Or do you take a look at other avenues to keep your profits from going south? And maybe that means massaging other services and products to make a buck and keep your bottom line strong. Well, that's a big part of what we'll be focusing on in the webinar today on can you survive online tire sales? Ah, that's perhaps the key question. Can you survive? Today we have a panel of four independent dealers who I'm guessing will say, yes, you can survive. Hey, it's not easy. But then, is anything in the tire and automotive business ever easy? We also have two gentlemen from Tire Connect in Canada. The firm doesn't sell tire websites, but rather offers digital marketing and software development that makes it possible for dealers to sell tires on their own through their own existing websites and how to stay competitive by doing that. Now, you've probably read stories recently in tire business about at least one major tire maker, and that's Akron-based Goodyear, announcing in January at its 2015 dealer conference in Texas that it planned to start selling tires directly to consumers via the Internet. Well, that program has been rolled out and, not surprisingly, has generated quite a bit of controversy, at least among independent tire dealers. Some probably believe it could be the death knell for their tire sales. Now, as a way to take a quick reality check on how dealers are feeling about this development, earlier this year, we at Tire Business asked a question on our website. Should tire makers sell direct to consumers via their own websites? I can't say the results were surprising. 68% of our respondents said, it's a horrible idea. They shouldn't be doing it. It competes with sales at my dealership. 22% say, eh, they're okay with it as long as the tire maker refers customers to an authorized dealer for installation. And 10% said they didn't really care. Now, Goodyear has tried to reassure its dealer customers that tire sales to consumers generated from its Goodyear.com website 
will be directed to a buyer's nearest authorized Goodyear retailer for installation. To Goodyear dealers out there who may be listening in today, has that worked for you? We'd like to know. Also, as we recorded in Tire Business, Group Michelin recently acquired an internet tire sales company in Scotland, and the French tire maker also launched a global platform with what it said is a first in the industry open search engine. All that, according to Michelin, was part of its strategy to be more innovative in retailing while responding to the many consumers using the web to research tires before purchasing them. Now, if you're a tire dealer waiting for the other shoe to drop, I hate to tell you, but that just happened. Tire Business reported on our front page of our August 17 issue that Michelin is testing out its so-called Michelin on-site program in the Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina market. Now, that's a direct-to-consumer concierge tire installation service where a Michelin van will show up at a customer's house or maybe place of uh, where they work and install tires along with doing other ancillary services such as TPMS servicing, precision balancing, nitrogen inflation, even wheel cleaning. Now, while Goodyear has a dealer network and its own stores, Michelin doesn't have retail outlets. So it's uncertain at this point how the company will roll out that Michelin on-site concept. But does anyone out there listening really doubt that this concept will take flight nationwide? And can other tire makers, say perhaps Bridgestone with its own network of company-owned stores, be far behind in selling directly to consumers? We're aiming for our panelists today to focus on key strategies they use to stay profitable in the shadow of these direct-to-consumer programs. And that would include maybe how they've adjusted their business model, how they've found more auto service opportunities, and we're looking for specific ideas that'll help our listeners. Now, to be upfront with you listeners in our audience, we approached Goodyear and Michelin about participating in today's forum. Goodyear said they were interested, but felt it was a bit too soon to talk about this program. A Michelin spokesman told Tire Business that the company's recent launch of a website doesn't include online sales, but it's actually a research platform to help inform consumers looking to make tire purchases. The decision on whether to sell product online is a group decision out of Group Michelin in France, the Michelin spokesman said. However, that was before the company's just announced Michelin on-site program. So again, everyone, we're trying to keep things positive here. We return to our original premise that there definitely is life after your tire maker starts selling directly to your potential customers. How do you survive? Hopefully our panel of dealers, all who work in the trenches, just like you out there, will provide some sound advice about surviving and competing. They're here to share their combined years of expertise and to give you, hopefully, an inside track on not only how to survive, but how to thrive in this industry. One last note before I introduce our roundtable participants. We understand there are a lot of dealers, probably a number of you out there among the maybe 400 or so tuning into this broadcast who are upset about these latest developments in the industry and you want to hear your voice. You want to have your voice heard. Well, we've heard many of your concerns, but we don't want this forum to be just an hour-long gripe session. It's got to be productive. I'm sure we'll get some comments from participants along those lines, and we'll try to air some of them along the way. But our focus today is to be more on the positive, and our panelists will be your guides along that roadway. And speaking of our eminent panelists, I'd like to introduce them to you. First, we have Alfio Barbara from Redwood General Tire in Redwood City, California. He's president there. Next is John Jindro, who's manager of Quality Tire Service in Johnsburg, Illinois. 
Our man, Mike Lowry, is service manager of Medford Auto Care in Medford, New Jersey. Tom White is based in Akron, in the Akron area. He's owner of Tire Source. And last but not least, our two gentlemen from Tire Connect in Canada, Chance Harrington, who's business development VP and CEO, George Siligatze. You've heard who the panelists are, and we'd like to get rolling here, but first, I'd like to give a big thank you to our sponsor today, Mighty Auto Parts. Now I'd like to turn it over to Alpio for some words of wisdom. Alpio? Thank you, Sig. Uh, my name is Alpio Barbara, and yes, I've uh, been in the tire business as a tire changer from uh, 19, uh, 1969 for 46 years, I've owned my business for 30 years. I've seen this uh, hurdle, uh, whether it's the uh, manufacturers opening more company stores, telling us they're not going to open them down the street, or signing up Costco and the Walmarts, and then uh, the auto dealers signing them direct, you know, stroke of a pen, 664 dealers. So this is just another another hurdle for us that um, if we stay positive and uh, align ourselves with with groups, for example, uh, in my case, I'm aligned with the, the Tire Pro group, and um, I feel uh, really lucky that uh, I had the opportunity to join them. And uh, they have cons uh, consistently always have webinars or training. Uh, they listen to us, so uh, we we bounce this kind of stuff off of the leadership team uh, at Tire Pros. The way I look at it is, it's just another opportunity for me to get another customer. Yeah, do I like it? No. Um, but, you know, um, America's Tire is right next door to me in California, and I've, uh, I've survived. Our store's been there 58 years. We do alignments, so, you know, we have something that uh, the customer can't order an alignment over the internet. In this case, he's got to come to me. So, if we do it with open arms and, and just give him service, maybe after this, after he comes into your store and sees your store and sees how nice your store looks and how professional your staff is, how knowledgeable your staff is, he may just say, "Look, I just assume um, do business with you." Yeah, you're going to get one or two of your customers. You know, maybe more. Who knows? Um, that are going to try the online thing. But it's not the same as it when you come into your store, you see the same face. Uh, they, if they have a problem with the tire, that you're going to take care of it. I mean, in this particular case, they order the tire online. Who's going to take care of it? You, have to, uh, you know, we had a customer from one of the online, uh, major online um, internet services, and he had a bad tire. He kept going back and forth for like three months. Uh, by the time we figured this tire or that tire, and he vowed, he said, I'll never go there again. He said, I'm glad, you know, the way you, you do business. So, you know, it's, it's just something that, um, it's another hurdle. Uh, stay involved in your community, that's another thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, they're going to they're gonna buy from you, your face, your company. Um, so you know that's just the way we do here in in, uh, in in Redwood General Tire. Now we're located on the peninsula of the West Coast, San Francisco and San Jose. Uh, we're right in the peninsula, so uh, it's a little different. We're really on the you know a lot of a lot of techies out here, and it's uh, it's going nationwide. So just embrace it, and and uh, they're going to come in and do, do breaks. They're going to come in and uh, do an oil change. They're going to come in and probably get a smog. Um, right now, they're not doing smogs on the internet, so just, just you know, you've got a lot more services than uh, than just that one tire. Do I like it? No. My pro my gross margins going down? Yes. But just stay positive, and uh, and I'm sure we're not going to beat it, so you might as well join them. And um, that's the way I look at it. Hey, Alpio, uh, Sig here. Most yeah. consumers are probably not aware of the additional cost of delivery and installation, or no whether they have any recourse if there's a problem. How do you guys deal with that? Are customers kind of surprised when they come in after they bought online and uh, they see these extra charges? Or how do you deal with that? Well, yes. First of all, 
after we put the tires on, install, and everything else, then we would bring them to the counter right before we cash them out. We'd have it right alongside of us. And as soon as you cash them out, you go, you know, the next time, if you would have just called us direct, you would have got it for this price. And if it's not at the same price, it might even be, in some cases, it might be a little bit lower, really. Um, they'll say, oh, my God, I went through all this trouble, and you could have just done it at one time. I say, yeah, that's exactly how, how we do it. So, uh, you know, in that particular case, you may have to go a little bit lower than you normally have done it. Um, you know, your gross profits will go a little bit less, but just show it to them. And um, the, 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 the major problem that we have in California is, is the taxes. Uh, you know, they have a, in my case, it's a 9.5%. Uh, they got a 9.5% head start because we have to charge uh, sales tax, of course, when they buy it through our store. But on the other hand, they got to pay the freight. And uh, so it, it's, it's almost a wash, and, and we explain that to them. But we stay positive when we explain it. It's not like one of those things, oh, God, yeah, you bought them with the, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, we stay positive and say, hey, maybe next time you'll come in. Now, what about the hassle of uh, adjustments? Do, do you guys get stuck with that, or is the manufacturer get that up? No, we, we'll handle the adjustments uh, just, just so we can try to – be positive with them and, and, and just show them that we are complete 100% customer service. We don't send them down the road. Uh, unlike uh, auto dealers, uh, and we get a lot of adjustments because our Ford dealer up the street doesn't do adjustments. Oh, yeah, just go right down to Redwood General Tire. But I'm telling you, Sig, uh, we'll keep those customers forever, and I like it. Right. You said earlier, Alpio, that you, you guys are the face of, of the dealership, where online it's kind of faceless and nameless. So thanks very much for your comments. We're going to move on now to John Jindra from Quality Tire Service. John, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, Good tell us a little everyone. bit about what you do. Well, I've been in the tire industry my whole life. Uh, learned the industry from my father and my uncle who started the shop back in 1959. Um, our store here, uh, we do anything from a lawnmower up to rear farm ag because we're in a farming community out here where the store is at. So I get pretty much anything and everything thrown at us all day long. Um, with this online tire buying, uh, it is kind of a pain in the tail. My father really wasn't the most hepped up on bringing in the new stuff. But today's world, you really have to stay up with today's stuff. If you don't, when your customer walks in and says, oh, you don't do anything online, that kind of puts a, I don't know if you want to call it an, something upon on you, that you're not up on the latest of technology, which kind of runs you into the diagnosing of cars, you know, figuring out their problems. So if your customers don't think that you're up on today's world, type internet stuff, I guess, if you want to call it, it kind of goes back towards your even your tire sales and your, your, your image of your store. So I have kind of really embraced this very strongly, did a lot of looking to find out who I really want to pair myself up with. We're installers of all the major online tire buying people that are out there. The one group that I've, we've really worked out well with is Tire Buyer. I'm not trying to give them a big plug, but we've also got together with a couple of the other tire lines, like we're a general gold dealer, we're a Hankook One dealer. What that does for you is when people buy the tires online, you're also getting a credit towards your tire purchases with Tire Buyer, they give you a little bit of a stiff, you know, a couple percentage on the, on the tire sale. You know, you know, so 40, 50, 100 tires, that adds up after a while. Plus, if they buy the tires in the tire line that you're signed up with, you also get some money there as well. So, I mean, sometimes guys are saying they're not making any money with the tires purchased online. If you're adding up all these um, you want to call them spiffs or bonuses or whatever you want you want to call them. Sometimes you can make up to twelve to fifteen dollars without even doing any tire sales. And then another thing that you have to look at 
is in our area in Illinois, all the online tire sales now, all sales over the internet are charged sales tax. So if you have to look at this as another way, if a customer is purchasing those tires online, they're paying the sales tax. Plus, if they're using a credit card, you're getting anywhere from 2 to 4 percent. I don't know where everybody's paying, but from 2 to 4 percent on a tire sale. So, I mean, if he's buying four tires and if the price is 400 bucks times four is another $20 that that credit card is costing you. So now you have to still take that off your bottom line. So that's another spot that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm losing that extra money on that tire sale. Well, what are you really losing? I mean, if you're in with the tire program, you're not selling the uh, cost of the credit card, you know, one offsets the other. You know, yeah, uh, you're missing that person walking in the door, but it's a, if you're looking at it in the other, main, other way, these guys are spending a whole lot of money that I don't have advertising out there. And if you're in the game as far as your mounting, your uh, insulation costs, you can see what everybody else is charging. I mean, yeah, there's guys out there willing to give this stuff away, but I mean, if you're down the middle, you have these people walking in the door that these people are advertising for that are walking in your door to find out who you are. Maybe the guy down the street that isn't on this program or has the, like my dad, hard-headed, about not wanting to go online, here you are, you're online, people are seeing you, and that's an automatic draw for these people to be walking in your store. You know, it, it, you know, as far as like you guys were talking about, tire warranties, yeah, it's a pain, but the thing is, anybody out there driving on anybody's new car, any new tire, you can get it warranty. I mean, it, what's the difference of the person walks in the door with a brand new car that just bought it from the dealer down the street and put a hole in the side of it, or the person who had bought it off a line and come into your store to have it taken care of as for warranty. You know, you didn't make money off of either one, but you're still doing the warranty, which means you're so you're like I was saying earlier, you know, your smiling face is out there, your um your, there's a green jasper and then it's just it's just trying to get everybody to understand there is not a fear in this. I mean, everybody once said that, oh, yeah, here comes the Internet. This is going to be a fad. It's going to go away. We're not going to see any more of it. Well, guess what? It's here and it's strong. So if you don't embrace how it. Do you, how much do you pick up uh, in Internet sales on your, on your dealership? Do you get a lot of traffic through your website? I mean, we're probably selling on a good month, probably 20, maybe 30 sets of tires to the tire bar. And now the other tire. Go ahead. Let me ask you this. After freight charges and mounting and balancing charges, is there really any consumer savings when they purchase online from, like, say, a, a Goodyear site or, or maybe a Michelin or one of the others? We have done, I've done many comparisons. I mean, customers have walked in, they've been on the rack, they've been on tire wire, they've been on whoever they've been on. They walk in the door. The person at the counter is going to make the difference. I mean, you can sit down and compare, you know, tire to tire. Okay, the initial cost of the tire, yes, will be definitely cheaper, but like what you were saying, as far as the rack, the rack adds shipping costs to that price of the tire. You know, another thing is with them or a couple of the others, it's shipped to their house. So, you know, if you, they don't have a registered uh, installer. So that kind of becomes of a hassle. Right. Um, so, it, you know, if you look at it dollar for dollar, sometimes depending on the size could be anywhere from uh, as little as 20 bucks and as much as $100 difference between our counter and what they're purchasing online. 
but now again, if you were if you look at it the other way and you go to that supplier who gives you the swift back, you know, the kickback back for the prices or for the tires sold, um, you know, uh, tire, you know, all that type of stuff. You're you're putting some dollars back in your pocket. But most of the customers will look at that tire and they'll come in the store. They'll say, "This is what I was looking at online. What do you think?" Right. So then you just basically have to go over your tire sales presentation and make sure the fit and fitment is correct to what they're looking at, making sure they're buying the correct tire for the use that they need. And if you can well, show them that's where you come in. That's where you correct. come in, John, as as the, as the tire expert. That's you, you put a face again, like Alpio said, on on the dealership where somebody going online, it, it's it's nameless, but. They come into a store, and you're the expert in the neighborhood. Um, I'm going to move on now to Mike Mowry, who's with Medford Auto Care in Medford, New Jersey. Michael, how's it going today, and what do you got to tell us? Uh, today's like most days, uh, busy at times, uh, quiet at other times, but uh, things are well. It's summer. Summer's ending. Uh, we're in New Jersey, so uh, a lot of local families around here are heading back from the shore. Getting ready for school to start. So, um, what I'd like to chime in on here is uh, basically taking taking from the last gentleman that spoke. Basically, you get what you pay for, and the way I look at that is you're paying for customer service. You can buy anything online. You can buy anything from Amazon. Um, what, why why do you go to a place when you can buy it online? You're going there for service. You're going there to, to start a relationship or to continue a relationship. So at that point, to me, that's where that's where the value is. Uh, you get what you pay for. So if you're able to provide great customer service, uh, they will people will come back and they'd rather buy from you than buy something online. And with that being said, uh, some of the ideas, you know, for a lot of the shops out there that. Obviously, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, I fell into the big piece of the pie chart there that didn't agree with with Goodyear and Continental, or not Continental, uh, Michelin, uh, going the online route. But speaking of online, what is your online presence? Do you do you even have a presence? Do you have uh, a social media presence? Uh, how do you advertise? Um, there's there's value in business development groups where you can team up with other shops in your area uh, to brainstorm to fight against the larger companies that have billion dollar advertising budgets. Uh, things of, those, of that nature. Um, you know that our industry is consistently changing, uh, so we consistently have to change with it. And I just believe that if you stay stagnant, uh, you'll become stagnant and, and they'll blow right by you. So uh, there's a lot of things to. that you got to focus on. I, I guess you have to, as a, as a dealer or, and business person, ask yourself whether your company's website is kind of an afterthought or a nuisance. It's there, I have to do it, but I'd really rather not. Or is it a legitimate profit center? Do you look at it as a way of connecting your company and your message to potential customers? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you look at it, Mike? Well, I certainly view it as a viable avenue uh, to, to complete sales. Um, we currently do not sell sell tires online. However, uh, I just had a customer this morning, and she had came in, and ironically, we sold her four tires uh, along with her state inspection and um, typical oil change and, and some brake work. But she she heard she she found out about us online. We have. Um, we have very strong online reviews, and for a long time we used an outside agency to, um, what do you call it, survey our customers uh, through emails. So you got to have an email database. And one of the things I would always stress to a customer, unlike the dealership, dealerships are completely different with their, with their whole uh, JD Power rated uh, surveys. Ours, I would say, Please grade us accordingly. If we stunk, I need to know we stunk. How can we get any better? And if we were good, we'd like to know that we were good. 
And when you're honest and upfront about that, as opposed to a dealership that's going to buy you uh, six free oil changes with a with a good survey to bribe customers, uh, people really appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, that helped build a database uh, where on our online presence, people can can pull up our reviews and say, "Wow, you guys uh, score 4.8 out of five stars uh, on a lot of things," and I, I just see you have a you have a good online reputation, and I'm willing to give you a try. That's the experience I had this morning with a brand new customer. So it is very important, Sig, and I would say, uh, you know, it's if if you if you don't have an online presence, um, you're offline. <laughs> you're not going to be profitable. Yeah. Have you had to deal with customers, Mike, that maybe brought in tires they bought online, and then they? Tell you the installer, hey, you're the bad guy. They, I got the wrong tire size. Now I got to go through this hassle to get them replaced. Uh, how do you how do you handle that situation? Well, you know that's happened. That has happened. Um, first off, I when a situation like that happens, I try to educate the customer first. Uh, just let them know, you know, it's like I didn't make the car, I didn't break the car, I didn't build the tire. Uh, I didn't sell you the tire. I'm just here to install it. Uh, so I try to educate them a little bit with it, uh, but then I, for the most part, I need to sympathize with them. I need to put myself in their shoes because I've certainly bought things online that, you know, maybe a shirt that didn't fit or a pair of pants that were a little too tight, uh, and I wasn't happy with that purchase. But, you know, if you sympathize with them, that's where you can start building your relationship with them. And then they realize, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have bought this online. Maybe I should have just came into your door or picked up the phone and called you and, and started the, the purchasing uh, process at that point rather than clicking and ordering and shipping and now you got to send something back and right. um, you know it's it's at that point everybody's a loser right the customer's unhappy and I'm unhappy yep. so Tom uh, over at Tire Source in Akron how how do you build relationships with your customers especially some who may come in uh, online They've seen a Goodyear's website or your website, and uh, maybe they're of the younger generation who kind of always shops online first. Uh, how do you uh, go about your business, Tom? Well, Sig, first of all, I'd like to thank you for letting me be on this call. Um, Tire Source, if you see in the name, Neighborhood Car Care, we're very active in the community. We try and... Um, have close personal relationships with all our customers, um, take care of their needs. Um, you know, as far as the, the tires on the internet, you know, I think it's it's inevitable that it's going to happen with Tire Rack out there, Tire Buyer Right Turn. Um, I, I think the best thing a dealer can do is embrace it. Um, and what we're doing at Tire Source is we're trying to vision what we're going to look like in three to five years with a majority, in my opinion, a majority of the tires being purchased online. Um, what, what's, our, what, what's tire source going to look like? What are the stores going to look like? What are the um, sales associates going to look like? Um, is it going to change the dynamics of your shop? So that's one important thing that I think everybody needs to pay attention to. The other thing, we're also affiliated like Alfio with Tire Pros. You know, being in some sort of a group, and I'd also highly recommend that, I don't know if people out there are in their tire association, whether it be the state or TIA, I'd also highly recommend that to get the information you need. Um, I think information is the key to the whole thing, and I'm, I look at tires on the internet as a positive in that it's going to drive more customers to our door, and also um, I can see in three to five years that as far as being a tire dealer, cash flow is going to improve. Um, not having to stock as many tires with so many sizes out there, you don't want to have too many tires that you're not going to sell. So I, I think that will actually help most of the tire dealers out there as much as they don't think it will. So you you got them in the door. They saw the, or bought their tires online. How do you massage that that sale, Tom, to get? something else what do, what do you key on auto service uh, routine maintenance well I think the first key is you, you, you got to do 
what they came in for and do a stellar job on the installation as well as a stellar job on the communication and the customer service. And then if other needs are, arise, that you're able to address those and communicate with the customer. You know, I, I think you, you kind of hinted at it earlier, and it, it made me recall the uproar a number of years back, a similar situation when Goodyear announced that it was going to begin selling tires through warehouse clubs, and then other tire makers quickly followed. And a lot of dealers out there felt they wouldn't be able to compete price-wise with the clubs, and uh, they were going to lose a ton of sales, and, oh, God, it's going to be the end of the industry for us. Uh, some put the percentage of tire sales through those types of outlets at roughly less than 10%. So you think it's kind of the same uh, thing, Tom, as far as you know, online sales from tire makers? Well, I, I think that it's going to be strong. I mean, I, I think, and I, I don't think at the onset it'll be strong, but I think once someone figures out uh, the perfect procedure to sell tires online, that, in my opinion, a majority of the tires will be sold online and we have to you know adjust to that and we have to find a way to make our stores profit centers with tires and with tires sold online and we got to make up with it auto service on that side of it right it is an evolution of the industry the entire industry continues to change and uh, we have out of Canada tire connect two gentlemen from there who are kind of uh, in the midst of helping change the industry. Uh, gentlemen, what do you have to say for yourselves? Hi there. Well, uh, my name is George. I'm uh, the CEO of Tire Connect and the founder. Um, and with me have uh, Chance Harrington, who's our VP Business Development. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I'll, I'll say a few words about the company and sort of how we got into tire business, so to speak. Uh, and then Chance will give, us, uh, give you guys a little bit more info on our sort of thinking that went uh, or goes behind the product and uh, kind of what we're trying to do in general um, and where we come in. Um, so uh, our company started almost 15 years ago in, as a software development um, uh, firm, uh, and we did your you know, sort of uh, basic websites, um, application development, uh, digital marketing, and, and various forms and so forth. Um, as of three and a half years ago, because of my personal personal experience of purchasing tires from my wife's car, I realized that uh, there might be an opportunity in tire retail space because I found the process to be very inconvenient and as a consumer, as a customer, uh, and, and slow just because uh, at least in Canada where you have seasonal markets it's very difficult to receive to get um, tire quotes when it's a uh, you know uh, uh, switch over season to for example winter tires or the other way back around for, to all seasons or summers you need to as a customer you spend you can literally spend hours calling different stores and trying to get you know maybe four or five quotes uh, you get put in hold, people have to call you back it's just because they have so much volume. They basically do 80% of their business in six to eight weeks. Um, so I looked at it as an opportunity uh, as a software development um, um, sort of company. And uh, we essentially since then built out a platform called Tire Connect, which uh, really has two goals in mind. One is to be able to help tire retailers provide quotes in store much more efficiently than they do, than they do now. Uh, and also uh, to be able to generate some ROI off their websites by helping them or allowing them to provide customers with the ability to quote tires off their websites and even sell tires off their websites. And we do that in a very non-intrusive way, meaning we can work with any website provider that you have your website with, assuming you do have a website. Uh, it's just a few lines of code. They, it takes literally to get you from not having any tire fitment tools on your website to potentially selling tires or taking deposits online within less than half an hour. And we're not exaggerating. Um, and that's basically what the tool is, uh, or the platform is built to do. And I'll uh, pass uh, 
pass it uh, now to uh, Chance Harrington, who can again give you a little bit more of a sort of the background strategy and thinking that went behind, uh, you know, in, in terms of development of, of the platform. Great. Thanks, George. Hey, Chance. Thanks, George. Um, Tycate came into being because we understand that there is a distinct correlation between an aging population and the tr transition from the purchasing power from um, the older generation to the younger generation. Now, millennials, as their 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 term, they're coined, um, tend to be a fickle group. Um, they they really pay attention to reviews. They are looking for instant gratification. So when they're searching online. Um, they want the ability to actually go through and make that purchase, um, not just do the research. And that is, um, right now, the percentage of um, tires that are being bought online is, is fairly small compared to the entire um, market, but it's not, getting any, it's not getting smaller each year, it's getting bigger each year. And we just wanted to be able to empower dealers to be able to get into that game um, and literally sell their own tires. And so it's it's a it's a trend that is not just unique to the tire industry. It's unique to um, it, it's not unique at all. It's if if it's been sold online, it becomes a commodity, and people are looking for the best price. Um, they are interested in um, where the, the tires are being um, uh, sourced or where where the tires are being um, fitted. Um, but that really comes down to. Um, having an online presence, as one of the other gentlemen said, um, is a very important aspect. And to be able to turn that online presence into a, an ROI, where there's actually, you can actually see money coming from it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a benefit to everybody. And um, if we look at the, the manufacturers, the good years of the world getting into the online game, it's not a, they're, they're not a, um, a cause for, for this, of the situation, it's just a symptom of the situation. Um, they're, they're jumping on um, the bandwagon simply because um, markets and the trends um, dictate that you have to be in the online space. Thanks, Chance. We're going to move on now, uh, participants, to our Q&A. So we'll open up to questions. For anyone who missed the instructions at the beginning of the webinar, you can use the console. Just expand the question box and write your question in the box that says, enter a question for staff. We'll do our best to get to all of your questions. You can also submit questions on Twitter using hashtag online tire buying or by emailing them to ascott at crane.com. That's ascott at crain.com. So our first question is, have any of the Goodyear dealers received business out of the website sales, or how has that worked for you? Uh, this is Al Alpio here out of, in Redwood City, California. Uh, we've had our first customer last week. Um, it came, a customer came in, bought the tires, of course did the uh, paperwork like we would do a regular national account and um, sold an alignment, uh, did an oil change. Customer is very happy and off, off she went. Were, were those uh, the alignment, the oil change extras, Alpio? Uh, yes, yes it was. Benefit yes, of the uh, online sale. It was. Uh, when the customer came in, she goes, oh, I didn't know you did alignments and I didn't know you did oil changes. Um, we've been there for 58 years doing that, but, you know, she could have been new in the neighborhood. Uh, she, was new to, she was new to Redwood General Tire, so it was a new customer for us, uh, which we liked. So, um, you know, we, uh, like I said, we embraced it and, and uh, we're okay. Anybody else there? Mike? John, Tom, you picked up any sales from the Goodyear site? This, this is Tom. We have not had any yet. They, they just ran the test in Chicago, and it, we have not had any uh, online sales from Goodyear yet. Okay. What are your thoughts about the uh, Michelin's uh, on-site on program? Any of you? Do you see that as a, another competitive edge to the tire maker or do you think you can compete with that? 
This is John Gendra. Uh, we had in the past, we had a group that was doing basically the same thing that Michelin was doing, running around uh, doing services at people's houses. Ever since that has happened, they have dropped off uh, out of that business pretty much. They even opened their own outlet now doing tire installations and other work in that area, that type of business. Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys are where it's snow and cold. I don't really see putting tires on when it's uh, when it's cold and snowing or raining. Um, I do kind of see a, a, a step back in that type of a program because when it comes down to that person that had that truck come out and install those tires, are they going to come back out and take care of the flat repairs? Are they going to do the tire rotations? What happens if that tire has a problem? Are they going to be sending those trucks back out to be taking care of that, those issues, or are they going to be relying on us, the independents, to be taking care of those issues? John, I mean, John this is Alfio, and I'd just like to add on to that, is that I think the Michelin situation is going to be just like their TRX and like their uh, PAX tire. It's going to be a failure. Um, uh, you know, you're going to go out and you're going to try to do a, a you know, a special wheel, uh, and then your your service tech's going to mess it up. I mean, it's just not going to, it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, you just it's just not going to work. And I think, uh, you know, you, you've got uh, what what if you're doing work on an R8? You're going to have that low profile jack out there with you. I mean, are they going to supply the the van? So I'm not even worried about the Michelin program as much as I am with the tire rack programs and and the Goodyear programs. I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, I. I Help you. It's it's Mike Mowry from uh, Medford Auto. Yeah, I Mike. I want to chime in there with you too. I, I I agree. I think that the Michelin program is 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 really a niche market, like super niche market. I don't see that impacting us too much. And I would look at that and say the comparison I can draw is uh, AAA, uh, at least out here in New Jersey, the AAA contracts for towing, uh, they've now opened a, a big shop, a big AAA repair shop, but all their tow trucks now carry like 15 different batteries on the truck to sell batteries to people. Um, and some people buy them when they come and, and, and some people don't. Um, but it's really kind of a niche market. It, it hasn't taken off, at least for AAA in my opinion, or affected my business that much. Exactly. Uh, I, I agree with you. Exactly, Mike, because you know, the, all they do is they put a battery in it and the car runs, but then about three weeks later it dies again because the alternator was bad. Right, so exactly. So now you gotta, now you got to call the AAA guy, bring you another battery that he bought that was under warranty while you're putting an alternator in. The customer just says, my God, and we, we, we've gone through the same thing. So, you know, back to John and the other colleagues is that the Michelin, the Michelin thing and uh, SIG as well, it's not – I don't see that right now. I, I, you know, it's it's more complex than just putting out. You know, you don't. You're not gonna have a. Uh, you know, I'm 64 years old, so I remember the 10, 10. The, you know, the 1010s and the 2020s. You know, you're not gonna have those. You got to take some, you know, pretty sophisticated equipment, a balance machine. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a little different. Well, gentlemen, we uh, we have a lot of questions. We're gonna try and move along here, speed things up, Elena. Yes. So. Um, pretending that marketing budget is not a factor, do you think that consumers are less likely to purchase tires on a dealer's website than they are to purchase tires on a manufacturer's website? Well, this is John Gender again. Um, manufacturers versus independents. I mean, a lot of people, the advantage you have over independent or you know, like a tire rack or a tire buyer, you're seeing more availability. You can compare tire to tire. You can you can compare a Continental to a Michelin to a Goodyear to a Bridgestone. You know, you can look at all the different ideas on the independent websites versus the manufacturer's website. You know, uh, manufacturer's websites are probably better for more finite information that you want to find out about a certain product. 
I think that's where you're going to probably find people going to the manufacturers and first the independent because the independent guys are going to be out there and they're going to be pushing they're going to try to push numbers so I mean I'm not saying that the manufacturer's website tires are going to be more expensive but they can do their price points a lot different than these guys with the independents because you're, you're, you're battling against a whole lot of other different lines and you know available whatever however you want a criteria on that tire that's on that website so I just think maybe the independent they have more of an up on it than the, than your, your majors the thing is what the major manufacturers have going for them is their names you know Goodyear's Bridgestone Firestones you know them are some old names and that's some tough marketing to battle because they've been out there a lot of years but, you know, here's a question for you. How how does a shop get to be an online installer if they're not a Goodyear or a Michelin store? As far as what? I'm sorry, this is John. How I mean, so, uh, somebody wants to know how they how their shop can be become an online installer if they aren't a Goodyear or a Michelin dealer. Oh, I'm, I'm, this is John again. Um, anybody can join any one of these websites. I mean, all you have to do is just go to the, the if you're interested in being a tire buyer, go to tire buyer, go to the rack. I don't have to be uh, per se uh, a Goodyear dealer to sell Goodyear tires. You know, um, I sell everything and anything on the on the internet. It's just when I become one of their dealers, I'm getting the spiff that they're giving out on that particular tire that they have on their line sheet. You know, some of the tires I can get two dollars, some I can get seven dollars per tire sales. So. Um. Speaking of tire Sorry. sales, I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to make sure that we're trying to get to as many of these questions as possible. Oh, How okay. many Go ahead. analysts today actually currently sell tires on their own website? Well, this is Alfio here. We we uh, we have a a quote bar on ours, uh, and then they would give us the information, and we would call them back, and then we would we would sell them. We try not to just put a number down of you know, $750 and hit, you know, send. We try to give them as much um, information on the tire that we, we try to get as much information on the tire that we can call them back and maybe even ask them for a phone number even though sometimes, you know, a few times they just soon do it online. But uh, we don't just, uh, we don't have on our website where you order four tires, hit dot, you know, and send and so on like that. Our, ours doesn't operate that way. John Jindra, um, we have it two different ways. We have it on our website as an info uh, quote area. They'd like to have a quote. So we would call them back and give a store quote to them, or I can give, respond to them online with a store quote, or they can go to our website. And when they're on their website, we have the link to the Tire Buyer uh, website on our link. They go right to that link. They can do all their own tire perch, you know, tire figure and all their pricing, however they want to do that. And then that link is automatically hooked up to our pricing. So if they go to our link, to our website, they're automatically linked into us where they're not linked into all the other tire dealers that are doing the installs. So you're kind of capturing that customer directly to you. It does not go out to anybody else because they're looking on our website. Well, we have That's tire buyer. Too. We have tire buyer too, John. I'm, I I forgot about that part. I'm sorry. This help you again. This is Tom. We have the same thing as John. We we'll send you a quote. We also have the tire buyer link. And what's nice about the tire buyer link is once they take that off your website and hit that button, then it kind of looks like tire source and tire buyer together. Correct. As a tire buyer website, which makes it nice. Correct. Correct. Yeah. This is Mike Mowry. I, I have a question for uh, the Canadian guys and their company. Uh, is the Tire Connect, is that 
Is that would they? Is that through tire buyer, or are they a separate uh, entity of that? No, we're independent. Um, we work. Well, we're independent software company again, and but we do have connections to all of those suppliers, so guys like ATD. Um, I mean, you name it, TCI, uh, US Auto Force, Mike Sinkelstein, there's a whole bunch of basically suppliers that we can connect you with. The difference is, as for Tire Buyer, for example, um, the way that program works, it takes you off or out of your website. Our tool sits within your website. It looks like part of your website. So essentially, it, it just allows you to do what Tire Buyer is doing currently for you. The difference is it's actually your tires, and you get 100% of, you know, all the revenues. Okay. Guys, here's a question that came in. Uh, how does TPMS play into your online strategy, or what recommendations do you have? Um, do, when customers buy tires online, do you pick up any business because they say they have a problem with TPMS? or they don't understand it? Uh, what's been your experiences? This is Mike Mowry again. Uh, my experience with that has been uh, customers, for the most part, are a uh, little apprehensive of, of hearing the news that they have tire pressure monitors that need replaced or that broke upon removal, even with the most updated equipment and care taken to not break them. It does it does eventually happen. So my uh, my recommendation for that would be to make sure your shop is equipped with a with with a uh, TPMS tool that can clone uh, other uh, IDs off of uh, old TPMSs that maybe have broken and you can program into new ones. Uh, train your guys, make sure they understand how to do that, how to work that. Uh, they're not going away. They're only going to be getting more complicated. Um, so basically, prepare yourself. Arm yourself with with uh, current technology that can handle those issues and educate your customers. I have a whole shelf of broken, worn out, rusted, uh, dead TPMSs to show people. Like, this is what happens. This is the industry that, that we're in, and it happens. And they have, uh, for the most part, watch batteries in them that eventually will die. So even uh, taking the best care of your vehicle, these are still going to fail at some point in time. Alpio here in California. One more thing, Elena, sorry. One critical thing, as I recommend to those that are listening, is that make sure you drive the car and look to see if the tire pressure monitoring light is not on. Because if it's on, make sure you tell the customer. Otherwise, they'll say, it wasn't on when I came in. And then you're going to get stuck replacing it at your cost. That's very important. This is, this is this Tom. Is this is Tom. Um, you should also be rebuilding the TPMS as a kit, including the valve cap, the valve core, the grommet, and the nut. And I In think seven years. As part of Goodyear.com, they do allow for that charge, and it's a $6 charge. That's parts and labor, which is a pretty good revenue stream. Um, so another question is, what impact will manufacturers' website sales affect companies like Tire Rack? And could the impact become positive for retail like brick and mortar stores? Well, they got a long ways to go to catch, to catch Tire Rack. Do all you gentlemen, uh, have you used Tire Rack in the past as a supplier? As a, as, a supply, as a supplier or as uh, putting on tires for them? Or, or, or putting on tires for them. Well, Alpio here, we use them both. Sometimes they'll have a tire that no one has. And sometimes they'll have a tire a lot less than our supplier can get it because they may have bought them six months ago. So uh, we do both. We do mount tires for them and we do buy tires. And I'm, I'm sure everyone else probably does the same. This is Tom. We do the same. We will. We're a preferred installer for Tire Rack, and we do buy product from them when we can't get it from RWD. Tom, um, how many? Mike. This is Mike. We don't typically buy from them, uh, although we have installed for customers that have bought from them. So. 
Tom, how much business do you get customer-wise from, from a tire rack where people call and say, I bought them on line a tire rack, will you install them for me? Is, is that uh, well, good stuff? You'd, you'd be surprised. We probably get, during the busy season, I bet in our Montrose store we get two sets a day, and they're, not, they're shipped right to our store with the customer's name on them. And then the customer calls up and says, hey, when can I get my tires installed? I got a notification from Tire Rack that the tires arrived at your store and we'll set up an appointment. And then usually those, customer, or those customers will become customers of Tire Source. So we have one last question we'll try to get to, it looks like. And then the ones that we didn't get to, we will have our panelists respond to via email. Um, so it's of course the crystal ball question, and it is where do you see the tire business in a hundred years? Will 3D pricing or printing impact the business in the near future? So I guess where is this going? Where is online tire buying and selling going to go in the next? Maybe the more important question is to hone that down to where do you see it being in the next three to five years? A hundred years from now, we'll be flying probably. So. <laughs> This is well, Mike here, I would say, <laughs> great question. Uh, I think in the not too distant future, everything's going to go that way. To the, I'm sure the other panelists on here aren't just strictly tire people. Uh, we're in, we're a complete automotive repair shop, and uh, I see this coming down the pike for auto parts. Uh, I still have people that call and say, "Hey, I bought my own auto parts. Will you install them?" Um, and my view on that has always just been. Would I rather make no money on the job or at least be able to make labor on the job? Uh, I don't appreciate doing it, but it's it's the wave. It's coming. It's here. Um, I think it could ultimately change the automotive industry, period. This is, well, Al, this is Alfio here in California. Is that Mike, I, I, I hold firm on the parts. I do not put on the parts because if it's defective, they're going to blame you. As far as the tires, real quickly, uh, it's the thing of the future. Embrace it. Uh, on so uh, first and the last thing is thank you very much uh, for uh, hosting this uh, webinar to everyone. Well, thank you for all our participants. Yes. Thank you. I think just to kind of sum things up, as the gentleman from Tire Connect said, Goodyear and Michelin are not really so much the problem as a symptom of the industry and the direction that it's taking as we kind of close here with the question about where we're going to be in the next three to five years or a hundred years even, uh, the industry is evolving like all the other industries that are turning to the internet to uh, use it to their advantage. So we appreciate everyone who tuned in today and uh, we will try to get the questions that we didn't get to funneled off to the proper channels. And uh, any parting shots guys? Well, thank just, you very much. Just, uh, just embrace it. Don't uh, be afraid of it. Go at it. Understand it. Because, uh, like everybody's been saying, it's not going away. Just, uh, just take it on. I tell you what, it, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just uh, there's a lot of help out there, and there's a lot of need to be understood. Very good. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.